a few Goldilocks Bears podcasts with Vincent Cloud, John Emmett, and David Lauer. And this is the show where we talk about our loves, hates, indifferences, or ambivalences, or things we're on the fence about. Uh, but not this time, not for this episode. If you're watching this right now, someone's ill or tired <laughs> or <laughs> I don't know. On a work trip. <laughs> yeah, work trip. You know, there's so many things that could be happening. But uh, and we we don't know. We don't know why. Unlike last time, we knew John needed, you know, he had to go to work. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. All right. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully you don't have to see this episode for a while, but we'll see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, usually the beginning of the episode is for Deja Fuse. We talk about old topics. It lasts like five minutes usually, but this is a whole episode dedicated to looking back, strolling down memory lane and discussing old topics. Uh, John, you said you have one good one. Let's start it <laughs> off with that. Uh, okay, should I start with the bad one? No, just kidding. Um, we had talked about smart watches a while back. And this is the good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I've I've been wearing one for Ooh. a couple days now for for research, and hate to admit, but I kind of like it, and. I know, Vince, you were giving us shit for talking about how big of a hassle it is to take your phone out of your pocket, but it's really nice to not have to. Um, okay. I've also been become obsessed with like looking at my heart rate all the time. Like I've never known what my pulse is, and now I always know. And I'm like, Ooh, uh, like right now I'm up to 82. I'm like, I better you know simmer down a little bit here. I'm <laughs> getting, too excited chatting with you fellas um so like but, if if a certain coworker walks into the room and then like they leave and then you're like you look down at your watch and be like that bastard he always <laughs> yeah um it also like tracks your stress over time and i found that like me waking up in the morning is the most stressful part of my day wow what does it feel that way i mean you know you always wake up and you're just like disoriented and you're like oh i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to do anything you know just that I, kind of stuff i think that's some sleep paralysis shit that you're <laughs> talking about i don't wake up stressed i'm like ah yes to mm. life you say so <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a morning person so i feel like my most stressful part of the day is the morning just because i generally like hit the snooze button twice so i'm always running late and i always get to work on time but like barely <laughs> yeah it's like it's not even the morning for me like i'm i like the morning it's just the act of becoming conscious i would say <laughs> uh, all right uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like the, um, like the notification thing and just like seeing a text come in and like, okay, I, I know what I need to know now I can move on. Like, it's pretty nice. Aren't you afraid of someone being able to kind of look at your watch and like, oh, his heart beats up. <laughs> you might as well be wagging your tail. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, you know, it's averaged over a few minutes at least, so it's not like, um, you know, you're not seeing like, oh shit, that just happened. Now look at the watch and see the reaction. <laughs> like, uh, there, there's a a bit of a delay and a bit of smoothing out to to protect against that. That just makes me think of like when you're playing online and you could have like these little things that pop up above you, especially if you're playing with like other people and stuff, and you're like, oh, see the lightning? That means you're kind of pissed off, you know. I think I've seen um, gonna be like. like speedrunners play with actual heart rate monitors and they have the display on their screen. So like, you know, you're at like world record pace and their pulse is like 120 and they're like trying not to mess up. And yeah, it's pretty crazy. Wow. Yeah, I've heard about like uh, pro chess players where they're just like sitting and playing chess for like eight or 10 hours straight. And they're like burning like, 15 or 20,000 calories but they're just sitting still in a chair wow, but like their heart insane. rate is going and their their brain is working so hard and they're at like such a high stress level 
that like that's why like all these like professional chess players like they'll lose like 10 pounds from a tournament <laughs> holy shit so you have to play chess you can't it can't be like checkers for eight hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> i guess it depends on how competitive it is how stressed i get about that oh man all right well uh hey if uh, if you don't mind uh do another day shot for you eh? real quick yeah Ooh. i'll go how about that all right um so this is this is kind of weird but it's almost like a twofer uh okay so we were talking about the oscars and um how we were like, oh, Li uh, Lily Gladstone's first Native American or whatever. But I was like, oh, there's two other people. And then the technicality was that they were Canadian, right? And you guys were like, hey, you know, let them have it and stuff like that, right? I also want to travel back when we were discussing, and I don't remember what topic it was specifically, where I think Dave, your friend was Mexican and they people were telling her that she was Native American. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. So why is it that we think Native American in Canada, but not Native American in Mexico? Because I've run into this within our own tribe, within my own tribe. You know, some some are like, oh, they're Mexican. And some are like, no, they're just, you know, the people decided that there was a line and shit like that, you know? Uh, the fucking, what is it, Spain colonized Mexico and shit, right? And then uh, the uh, English, uh, North America, and then French, Canada, and upwards, and oh shit, right? So I've always, not always, but over time, I've always hated the anti-Mexican rhetoric that I would hear all the time. And I just feel like that's just kind of drilled into people to be like, oh, Mexico, Mexico, you know? And I'm like, I think they're us because I have a uncle and he's like a fucking rancher dude and all his stuff is like super spicy shit. And I'm like, this is like Mexican food that he's eating and stuff. And then I have a brother-in-law who he makes food. Uh, he's from California and all of it is very Mexican like dishes and stuff. So now I'm like, well, what's the fucking difference? You know, I would call uh you know can canadian the the inuits whatever you want to call them and then the brazilians down there and all those other like those are americans uh, native americans as well too that's how i feel and this again this isn't how i've always felt but over the years i'm just like nah, they're us too you know the, if you if you pay attention enough to their when like the brazilians do their traditional shit it's like that's like us, except their feathers are more colorful because they're in the tropics, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so I don't know. That's how I feel. Yeah, yeah that's a fair point. Um, I guess the um, the only thing I can think of is like where I feel like with um, South and Central American and like with Mexican um people when the europeans came over there was much more like intermarriage and um like a lot of the people today are of mixed descent whereas like that seemed to happen less up north for whatever reason like um you know it's pretty clear cut like european or or native american so i'm not saying that makes them less european or less native or anything like that um i just think it, that might be why we think of it differently a little bit yeah yeah uh, because i know i know plenty of uh mexicans or they probably wouldn't want to be called native american because that's a whole there's a whole identity again that whole border thing has annoyed me for so long now where it's like, it's just a line that was made and, you know, oh, this got so annoying. So, yeah, I've I've known plenty of Mexicans who wouldn't call themselves natives. And there's plenty of natives who would call themselves Mexicans. There's, uh, um, I'm not going to say any names. But, yeah, there's, it's really bizarre. But I don't think there should be that divide or whatever. 
it's fine. It's all up to that particular person, I suppose. But I don't know. Just what, what do the... you think, Dave? Where do you draw the line? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. I, I feel like it's just all like kind of what you're saying, where it's like arguing semantics, really, because you know when all the like Europeans came over, like different like Spaniards went like more to like Central America and South America. But yeah, as to you were saying, John, like there was lots of intermarriage. And um, so, you know, the Incas and the Aztecs became Brazilians and Mexicans. And so like we have these modern like names for them that kind of like obscure like what their past and their descent is yeah i remember uh one time in high school i had the movie traffic because I, I love that movie traffic and i put it in and at the beginning they're speaking spanish right and the teacher's like oh is this the movie the whole time and i'm like yeah they speak mexican the whole time and someone some white girl she's like did you seriously just say that? <laughs> They're speaking Spanish. And I was like, uh, but I was, I remember thinking, I'm like, well, I don't know what Spanish is particularly. And, you know, if I really, really could have been thoughtful and stuff, I would have been like, oh yeah, well, what is their actual language before they were forced to learn Spanish? You know, what was that? I, how, how would I know if it was the same thing? I really wish I would have told her off, but she was hot, guys. She was seriously hot. Well, <laughs> and Vince's in defense. Yeah. <laughs> Vince, also in your defense, uh, my wife, uh, she's looking to like learn how to speak Spanish. And as she was taking a course, she was like talking to someone who speaks Spanish. And they were like, well, what kind of Spanish do you want to learn? Do you want to learn Spanish from Spain, like European Spanish? Or Mexican Spanish, because if you're learning the language, you have to choose which one you want to learn, Ooh. because there's enough differences where if a Mexican person went to Spain and like maybe the, told to leave, there'd be <laughs> like, like, God damn it. Everywhere I, I mean, <laughs> it, I don't know, maybe it'd be like a super harsh, like Southern accent or something where you're like, man, this guy's from the sticks or something like it's there's enough that would be lost in translation where there's they're kind of a separate language in a way or at least a different dialect Shit. like the, the i was gonna say the queen's english i guess it's the king's english again now versus oh just because American he's english. alive now and so yeah. the queen right for now until we get a new king <laughs> that's how it oh my gosh that's so bizarre um, I never want to come off as racist, but uh, I hate those Britons sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I stop myself. I stop myself. As a Scotsman and an Irishman, I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> Monarchs. Uh, should we do another day show? A few. You should. Yeah. No I need can... for fancy segue challenges on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I got one, and it's a. Uh... I think, John, I think this was your topic, talking about um, trying to prevent, like, possible evil technology. Oh, yeah. And I watched a Netflix movie last night. It's called Atlas, featuring Jennifer Lopez, the musician slash, slash actress. Um, slash dancer. <laughs> yeah, slash <laughs> Jenny from the block. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, and this movie... Uh, if you don't watch the whole thing, it's not like it's pretty good. It's better than what I expected. And it's like a total sci-fi movie. Um, at least watch like the first 10 minutes or 15 minutes of this movie, I think, because in order to like put you in this world, they just they're just cutting through like news scenes and there's news reporters at a desk and they're showing scenes of like what's happening. And it's just about like AI robots are like in the future AI robots will kind of do all the the those jobs that we don't want to do. They'll be your servants, they'll be your cooks, and everybody will have like an AI robot that does a certain thing for them. And what happens in the movie is basically there's like 
AI terrorists, where an AI decides to go off on their own and starts doing their own thing. And are, are like, are they sentient? Are they doing it on their own? Or is like their computer system been hacked by computer hackers and someone's controlling them to do this? Um, and so it's just, it's a great, like, it's, it kind of reminded me a little bit of like Terminator where you have like robots from the future and they have evil Skynet and they're doing all this stuff. Now this movie is definitely no Terminator, but just the concept <laughs> of like, they're kind of, the AI robots are more indestructible than a human. Um, they're way smarter, like computing power and they have spaceships and they have like mech robot, like transformer type, uh, things that they can use to like kind of wage war on each other and fight each other. Um, and it, it was really like eerie, like watching like the first 10 minutes because it just like, wow, it just seemed like, yeah, I could totally see all of this happening because like we have computer hacks like all the time. And in the future, if you have like a robot that's capable of doing incredible things, like if they're hacked or they become sentient, they're going to do horrible things and it's going to end up, you know, like the third matrix movie and everyone's going to suffer. <laughs> I'll be sleeping. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else will suffer. <laughs> all, the, all this gunfire outside your house. and you just like go to... <laughs> But okay. So but Vince you... is wearing a smartwatch. It'll be like heart rate 50. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, but this is going back to cameras being everywhere, and both you guys were like, "Oh, well, what if it was bad and stuff?" I'm like, "Yeah, anything could be turned against us." But I don't know. I feel like you uh, guys. I, are I thought boring. Dave was on your side. For was that he? Whole thing. I don't know. For the most part, I kind of oh. like it. I, I like it now, at least you know in the timeline. That's that that's I what it was. Good. Right, right. But right. in the future, it will inevitably go terribly wrong. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, then, in is there any way? Okay, say if you had the budget and the the manpower and woman power, what would you do? How could you prevent videos from getting everywhere? What you know? Ah, how about that? Or is it too late? Pandora's box style. Um, I mean, you would need to have like a foolproof system, like I don't like with Bitcoin. They have like uh, blockchain where you can trace it back. And I think it's the same way with like those online images. What do they call those? Um, NFTs or something. Oh, I was going to say, block... I was going to say Getty images. <laughs> so... <laughs> but like, Google yeah, with like search. those things, you can look at like the blockchain and they can trace it back and they know the origin. And, but like the blockchain is impenetrable apparently. And you can't know or like can't alter it in some way. But Ultimately, like whoever's building it could probably always create a back door to fiddle with that stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about computers or programming. Uh, yeah, just... I mean you're you're always um you know subject to whatever the creator wrote to in it, like backdoors and stuff. I just uh learned this story about um a company who made encrypted cell phones, um, like with the intent target um, audience of criminals that they could use these encrypted phones, communicate with each other. Um, and, you know, like basically do everything on, you know, below, below the radar or whatever. But the twist is this company before they even sold their first one, um, partnered with United States law enforcement and wrote a back door into it. So a copy of every single message was getting sent to this company's server who was like ostensibly making these devices for criminals. And it was just like a gigantic sting operation. It's like insane. Oh my gosh. So, okay. Uh... You guys mentioned Dark Mirror. I blame Dark Mirror. I feel like you guys would be way Black more Mirror. laid back. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. No, this story I just told is real life. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying like Black Mirror's got everyone like, oh, don't trust technology. Yeah. I don't. Uh. 
But like, because that Bandersnatch, that was the Choose Your Own Adventure, it turned it on me. It was like, oh, you think you like Choose Your Adventure? Then it started <laughs> to mock the process and stuff. Oh my God, I hate, that just really annoyed me. I think that's what I'm really lashing out about. <laughs> Black Mirror. <laughs> Yeah, and I think, like, for me, it just comes down to, like, the history of, like, corrupt, like, oppressive governments always, like, ruin stuff and, like, any, like, type of technology that we create is great. And it's, like, it's great for a little while until, like, you know, the FBI and the CIA or whatever, you know, every country has their version of that. Once they get a hold of it, they're going to kind of try and use it and shape it and mold it to benefit them and have more control. Because, you know, there's every government, they just have one, uh, like, one goal in mind, and that's power and control. And that's always, like, every government just kind of kind of grows in that direction where it's trying to get more control, more power. Yeah, and it's insane, like, stuff that, like, should be just, like, a win for humanity becomes like a country versus country thing like the space race and all that stuff like like all of humanity should be celebrating like oh russia put a man in space and like you know the united states put a man on the moon but instead it like became this like terrifying like they're gonna get there first and it's gonna be horrible for us kind of thing yeah uh, yeah, and like even with like with COVID, when they made the COVID vaccines, it was like, all right, the entire world buy our our American vaccines and we'll sell them to the entire <laughs> world. And it's like you can't just like let other countries like make their own and like help them because it's like a pandemic. We can't help anyone. No, you just got to sell it your own and make your own money. Bleak. Bleak. Let's go to a brighter, sunnier topic. God damn it. All right. This one could be quick, depending on if if you guys have any. Oh, this was but... one of the bad ones. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> God damn it. Um well no, it's like we're halfway through the year now, and I I wanted to check in on uh New Year's resolutions. Um I was indifferent to them at the time. But I did decide that I am going to um, practice foreign language every day. And I have been successful at that. So that is a successful New Year's resolution for me, but maybe more successful because I knew I was going to be held accountable, like if we did a check in on it. Um, <laughs> did you guys happen to do any New Year's resolutions this year? And if so, are you, did you maintain them? I didn't make any this year. I didn't make any like official. Um, my goal was to start eating better and exercising more, but I've had that same new year's resolution for 10 years and it's never <laughs> stuck. <laughs> like, I think I got to like, I think I did really well for three weeks it was well a little it was probably like 18 days it was a little under three weeks but i was going to the gym at least three or four times a week and i didn't eat like a cookie or ice cream or any like carbs i was trying to cut out carbs and it, yeah and then it inevitably like now it's like i ate ice cream yesterday and i had a nutty bar and <laughs> uh yeah I, I think when we talked about it didn't I say, like, oh, New Year should be some other time just because you want a change of whatever? You want to see a physical change or a visual change to really feel like this is the time? Uh, so, but for me, though, it would have to be, and I can't believe I've brought this up so many times, my high blood pressure. That was the moment where I'm like, oh, now I kind of have to get healthy and, you know, all that stuff. So as of, uh, it's been a month now, I got stuff charts written down things that uh i want to do in terms of exercise health um and then just other stuff like cleaning because it's like when i go to work i get a little list i don't have to do much because it's basically a security job but there is some like cleaning that i gotta do and i'm always like all right yeah it only takes 
so many minutes that I'm done, you know? So I finally like, wait a minute, if I apply that to my own life, I could just, <laughs> you know, I could just sweep and it'll be done like that. So that's what I've been doing for the past month. Uh, and then the satisfaction of checking those things off is uh, a little release of dopamine, uh, serotonin, whatever the fuck it is. It feels good, guys. It feels great. Heck yeah. 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 I love doing that stuff. Um, I've kind of fallen out of that, but there was a little while there. I'll, I'll, I'm going to get back into it because you said that. But like I work four days a week, like four uh, 10 hour shifts. And what I would do is I just in my notes on my phone, if I had a smartwatch, I could do it that way too. <laughs> but I would just make a note of like something I need to do on my days off. And after like the four days of work, I would have like six things on that list of like things I need to do. Like I either need to I need to buy this at the store where I need to do this around the house, this around the house. And like, then once the weekend got here, it'd be like on my first day off Friday, I would try and do as much of that list as I could. And if I did, then it was like, hell yeah. It's like, I, I accomplished all this stuff and it was, it's super satisfying to make a list of like goals and things you want to do. And then like, you know, short term, like doable things, you know? And those, like, the small goals are the things that you can get, you know, that are obtainable. Oh, uh, on my chart, there's uh, brushing teeth, and it's there's two blocks, two, two little two, two squares. <laughs> two, yeah, X for the morning, X for the evening. I'm still at one, though. Uh, and there's some I mean, days that are... Check off all the evenings. Those, those don't matter. <laughs> Uh, uh, segue challenge. I resolve. Is it my topic. turn? I resolve. Uh, no, it's me, right? Aren't I okay. second? Yeah, you're second to me. Oh, I was gonna mention, um, were, were you gonna mention J uh, Jake Paul at all, Dave? Because I don't want to step on your toes. No, no. no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson, you know, they were supposed to fight and shit. He's like 27, Jake Paul, and uh, Mike Tyson's like 57. Uh, just recently, Mike Tyson had a medical emergency. He had to be, I think, yeah, they paramedics or something. I don't know. But something happened. I don't even think they released what it was. But right now, that fight is postponed. Yeah, he, he has a, like a stomach ulcer, and I guess it had like a flare up, something to do with the stomach ulcer. But yeah, he was like on a plane or something. And then when they, they didn't have to do like an emergency landing, but when they landed, he had notified like the flight attendants and they had contacted like the medical personnel at the airport to come and get him. And they put him in like a wheelchair and took him off like first before anybody else. I I just realized that uh, I want to take this back and I want to talk about the Jake Paul thing. <laughs> Wait, no, I, I I'm going to talk about it. Okay, all right, all right. I was actually thinking about bringing it up because um, just this week my um, coworkers were talking about this, and thanks to you two, I was able to actually seem like somewhat educated on the topic, <laughs> and like I just parroted the things that you guys said about it, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. <laughs> he I seems a, so informed. I am a manly man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's so many about... shades of his personality. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. It would be yeah, it, I... it would be hilarious if we could see a video of it and John's literally doing our jokes and shit like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> With our cadence and shit. <laughs> John, your mm. voice sounds different. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw I saw some of like the headlines talking about it being delayed, and it was just like you know they mutually agreed to delay it so that way they can have a a full training camp so they could both be at a hundred percent for the fight. And I'm like, Tyson's fifty seven. He hasn't been at a hundred percent since he was like forty. Like, oh. <laughs> He's a little past his prime, guys. Like, I don't think they're ever going to, like, I don't know. This doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I mean, how, I don't know. I'm kind of half expecting Jake to, to just dip out of that. You know, it's 
too it was too bad enough that he was 57 and now he had to go to the hospital for something like for an ulcer do 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 27 year olds go to the hospital for an ulcer i don't even what's an ulcer stomach acid no it's like a it's like a hole in your stomach lining yeah, yeah and, and like acid will kind of eat away at it and it's it can be very painful i don't think you're ever too young to have a stomach ulcer usually if you're very young and you have a stomach ulcer it's either because you're like bulimic and you vomit a lot and you have acid problems in your esophagus um or if you just drink like insane amounts of alcohol Okay, well then, so what you what you're saying is, let the fight continue because to me, if if it's not that bad, I guess sure. But if I was Jake and my opponent, who's old, had to go to the hospital for something, it'd be like, call it off. But who else is he gonna fight? Uh, I guess you're underestimating the fact that Jake Paul has no shame. <laughs> he just wants that money, and I think Mike Tyson wants the money too. Uh, Dave, now I want us to withhold some good jokes because we know John's just going to repeat this <laughs> shit. <laughs> Come on, let me have it. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Uh, uh, next site is, yeah, let's go. Um, One so more. So this is the Deja View for you two, but not for me because I wasn't in on this conversation, <laughs> so I don't even know your guys' thoughts. But <laughs> Uh, I know that you guys talked about country music, and I think it was John's hate. He hated country music? Is that correct? No, I was indifferent to country music. Oh, you were indifferent to it. Okay. Yes. Um, I used to hate country music, and I like I hated it from like the year 2000 to the year 2020. So we're like, because I loved it when I was a kid. There was Garth Brooks and Alan Jackson and Brooks and Dunn. And, like, you know, the older stuff like George Strait or Randy Travis and then, like, Johnny Cash. And there was good country music back then. But then I feel like around the year 2000, country music got, like, kind of pop sounding. And um, I think the success of, like, Garth Brooks, the fact that Garth Brooks was so, like, produced in a way that the music industry started to try and produce like all of the country artists a little too much. Oh, okay. Then the sound okay. kind of changed. And I think country music really sucked for, you know, a long time. Um, uh, you know, Jason Aldean, Keith Urban. I don't want to like throw people under the bus, but those two guys are easy targets. Uh, oh, is it like but, shitty artists? Well, yeah, just like the style of country music that I don't like, where it just, I don't know, it's just kind of bad. Um, but I, I guess I'm saying all of this to say that I kind of like country music, and it started to, like, come back for me. Because, like, the most famous, like, newer guy is Zach Bryan. I think he's got a really good voice. It's, you know, it's gravelly. Um, but he's got, like, a powerful, strong voice. And then there's other guys, like... You know, Sturgill Simpson, Colton Wall, Brent Cobb, Brian Martin. Um, they're, they all just have like this kind of like more of like a back to your roots type of country sound. And I think with like streaming on everyone's phones rather than listening to radio stations all the time, that a lot of these more like organic country sounding artists are able to get popular because people are just on Spotify or Apple Music or Pandora or YouTube music. Um, I mean, like, I don't love country music. It's still not going to be like my first thing I listen to. I'm still going to be rock and roll first. I still love hip hop and rap. Um, but country is not like a deal breaker the way it used to be there's still like there's some country artists now that i can listen to and i like um but there's still like a limit to country i'll listen to because inevitably they just start talking about like whiskey and beer and pickup trucks and gravel roads and <laughs> then you just start to roll your eyes a little bit and you're like okay very original but you know country music is a lot better than it was uh garth brooks he must have saw that there, you know, there was nothing left, so that's why he created Chris Gaines, right? <laughs> right. And yeah. I don't know any of those new artists you mentioned. Um, like, I definitely quit 
paying attention to it about the same era that you were talking about originally. I just haven't dipped back into it at all. I definitely enjoyed like the outlaw country and stuff that we were talking about. I won't say last week, when whatever in the past it happens to be. <laughs> um, and one point I brought up on the, um, when we talked about the first time is like the, the genre Americana at some point it was just like country started to suck really bad, but then good music that fits like, I think like the traditional genre of like country or bluegrass or th that kind of stuff just falls under Americana now. And it doesn't get played on the country stations, but um, in, in an alternate timeline, it might be, called country today i don't know uh yeah i yeah. think <clears throat> oh sorry i was gonna say real quick we were when we were talking about it we were saying like oh it's so poppy now but i feel like that it, you know because we were we hated what we heard on the radio if we tried to listen to country but i think that's just kind of like rock music you know i can't listen to that poppy stuff either though you know I really don't like it. So maybe other country fans are the same too. They're like, oh, that's that's that Florida Georgia line shit. I don't know. That's yeah, I I should start viewing it that way. Cause like, yeah, I used to love that old shit, even though I didn't I didn't plan on on listening to it. But like, for example, my dad loved country music. My mom hates it. Um, she was more rock and roll. Oh, oh shit! Isn't that a song? I'm a little country, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> a little but they weren't <laughs> siblings. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. So I've heard some good country stuff, and I I wouldn't mind if I got cooler. That'd be yeah. Why not? Uh, anything else? Nah. That's it. Nah, brah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got on country music. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, it's up to you guys. One more, few. Want to do it? Who's up? Sure. Do you, John? Oh shit! Oh, you don't have any good ones. <laughs> <laughs> we no, can end it well, here. Huh? <laughs> oh no! God. <laughs> God. Choose your own adventure. <laughs> Come on, do it. Uh. That's about it. Oh, I got one more. Hold, hold on. We could we could cut all this shit. I don't give a fuck. But one more. I asked John and Matt about this, and they were very helpful uh, in those early days. But So I'll ask you, Dave. Have you noticed in movies where it's two guys are oh, going for <laughs> one girl, it's a romance, right? But if yeah. two girls are going after one guy, it's a comedy. I mean, I've seen plenty of movies with that combo, and it's so bizarre. It's way rom way more romantic, it seems, to women that two men are, are you know, they're longing for them, uh, for her. I uh, think the Twilight movies, you know? But if it's two girls, for the guy, all of a sudden it's from the guy's perspective. He's like, I got two bitches here, and I, but I have to, it's a farce. I can't let my two dates see each other at prom, you know what I mean? If that's never the case, it's never played for yucks when it's one girl and two guys only when it's two girls and one guy is it funny have you noticed any of this no i've damn it <laughs> it, makes, it makes perfect sense though the, like the way you describe it it makes perfect sense i'm trying to think of like certain movies in my head and i'm like dumb and dumber and i'm like oh well. god damn it i think someone and... mentioned dumb and dumber before too <laughs> and then i'm thinking in my head i'm like Night at the Roxbury. Where there's, you know, it's all the guys and, like, they're always trying to get after one girl in the club. Right. I, I think that's more, that's not really what it's about, though. The, in those movies, it's, it's there are comedies to begin with, and then those two dudes fall in love with a girl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, like I just feel like the guys don't find it romantic that two different, you know, oh, uh, up. Uh, a rich woman and a poor woman who do i choose <laughs> you know what i mean it's not that way at all it's always with the girls who's like oh my god i can't believe it jacob edward who do i choose you know it's more like guys are like i'll ch I choose both <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know i get 
like do you have some examples of movies uh well like there's so many r romantic movies like what weathering heights or weathering heights where there's original heights i don't know <laughs> weathering <laughs> yeah that uh uh there's uh first night with uh because that's the story of king arthur losing guinevere to uh lancelot you know that was that was that was done romantically or whatever uh shit is brooke home <laughs> could you ask her because ask her great. <laughs> why is it when two why is it that women find <laughs> find it romantic two guys are after her but we as men don't find it romantic when two girls are after us i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I I had John and Matt ask their significant others as well, but I don't remember them. I don't know. Okay, I, was, I, was, I, I can get back to you and make another date after you. I reported but... back. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Go go listen back, Vince. <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> I just remember not being satisfied with this. <laughs> I will ask her, and we'll we'll get you a you know. I'll get you an answer in the future. No, I'm like a deja few for a deja few. <laughs> yes. Uh, all oops or whatever. All right, fine. <laughs> oops, all oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I I have one more topic we can do. All right. See you. Like a little deja few. Um, yeah. remember that episode a while back when we talked about that video game Oregon Trail? Yes. Yeah. I, I oh, so long that. ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my wife was listening to the podcast, um, which <laughs> apparently she doesn't. Uh, she just started texting me today while I was at work and uh, just like commenting uh, like on her podcast about like things she agreed with and disagreed with. Um, she mentioned to me, she's like, oh, my God, those guys say Oregon wrong. And I was like, how do you say the state Oregon? And I was like, OK, I'm like, you are saying it correct, but. The video, I swear, the video game Oregon Trail is pronounced different than I would pronounce the state of Oregon. Oregon, Oregon. Like, I pronounce them differently when I'm saying the video game versus the state. Yeah. Like, how yeah. do you guys say it? I would definitely call the game Oregon Trail. And I'd probably switch back and forth for the state. Like, I know that they want it to be called Oregon or whatever, but, um, like, that's, I didn't grow up calling it that way. And it's, like, a, a conscious thing I have to remember. Like, uh, Nevada versus Nevada. And yeah, I stuff. still can't keep that one straight. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think for sure a lot of people say Oregon because there's a, a, a parody game or something like that called Oregon trail <laughs> yeah it's like a slasher or some shit but yeah that's that's interesting that is exactly because i've been to o oregon and i wasn't like hey how's everything in oregon you know and they're like oh we don't do that here in portland i mean I it's, it's just most people don't sucks. pronounce the state i live in right either minnesota 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 is that, minnesota, <laughs> minnesota. Mini soda. Yeah, you're too quick. You really got to draw that all like a native. How about Oklahoma? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone ever say that? But then there's like Wisconsin and Wisconsin. You know? Yeah. yeah if, I from... say, if I say Wisconsin to somebody from Oklahoma, and they're like, oh, yeah, I can tell you're from there. <laughs> I'm like, why? Because I said it correctly? And they're like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I'm still waiting for your Oklahonian uh, accent to kick in, and it's yet to happen. But I'm I'm waiting for it, and when it happens, oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, it's gonna happen for sure because I will talk to people like patients at the hospital. I just want to like be friendly, so I will talk and sound like them. Are you doing that now? Yeah. <laughs> No, or maybe, yeah, maybe I am to you guys because you guys were from up north, so I, you know, I just <laughs> start talking that way. 
He talks and sounds just like us, Vince. Oh my god! Right, I like this he guy. Must be one of, <laughs> I'm one of you guys. I swear. <laughs> oh man. Well, extra points for your wife for listening to our fucking podcast. Hello out there. <laughs> <laughs> Share our shit. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. This was a few Goldilocks Bears podcast. Go to a few Goldilocks Bears podcast. Oh, wait, a few Goldilocks Bears dot com. Uh, I was Vince. Oops, I was John Nemitz. And David Lauer. Oops, oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs>